welcome back to the Daihatsu Yonix Japan Open quarterfinals day here in Tokyo. What a thrilling men's singles we've just witnessed. The defending champion Kento Momoto just steadying the ship for defending champions and also steadying the ship for home players because our first two quarterfinals of the day, the home players and the home fans were disappointed as the home players lost those encounters. Well, it's women's singles next. In fact, we've got two women's singles uh, coming up, our next two matches. And the first of those women's singles is the 2015 winner, former world champion, Nozomi Okuhara, the number three seed this year up against uh, Nichiron Jindapon of Thailand. Now, when we look at the draw from the quarterfinal stage, I can actually tell you by the second round we had four former champions who had each been in two finals each, but we lost one of them. Herbing Jiao lost to Jindapon in yesterday's encounter. So by quarterfinals, six different nationalities, two players from Japan, two from Thailand. We had uh, five seats, uh, including the top four, as you can see, two in the top half, both former champions, but one of those former champions, Tai Su Ying, who won this title seven years ago, was beaten by Canada's Michelle Lee. And it's the first time that a player from the Americas has reached the semi-final stage here at the Japan Open in either of the singles disciplines. So that's absolutely tremendous. But we're going to find out now who she will play against because our next match is Okuhara against Jindapon. Well, you can see three courts in action. I can tell you that women's singles with the number two seed, Chen Ufei, is in a third game with Busanan Ongbangarangban from Thailand. So all of these matches fiercely contested, as one would expect at the Olympic test event. Of course, it's the Japan Open, but it's also doubling up as the Olympic test event. So in one year's time, this will be day two of competition at the Olympic Games. And I can't help but wonder whether uh, these two players will be battling it out in their separate groups. Because of course, at the Olympic Games, we have a group stage first before the knockout stage. Well, as far as Nozomi Okuhara is concerned, she's trying to become the 13th different player to contest two consecutive women's singles finals, because I mentioned that she won the tournament here in 2015, but she was beaten in the final a year ago. Detroit, this is the seventh black, meeting the right. between black. the two players, and as you can see, black. Okuhara has won the uh, five and the interesting point is she has won the last five encounters. The last time they met was at the Denmark Open last year. First round encounter, but that's incredible. Six previous encounters between the two. Okuhara, the last five. So she must be very confident coming into this quarter-final encounter. 24 years of age now. Nozomi Okuhara, former world champion, won the gold medal in the World Championships two years ago in Glasgow, beating Pusala Venkata Sindhu in one of the best matches I think I have ever witnessed. Well, she went down from her career high on Tuesday earlier this week, uh, down to number three, and it means that she has spent a total of 17 weeks across four different spells as world number two. She has been in two finals this year, Singapore and Australia. Still looking for her first title of the year, though. In the first round, she beat teammate Kawakame in two straight games, and then the European Games gold medalist Mia Blickfeldt of Denmark. That was very comfortable indeed as well. So to Nichoron Jindapon, 28 years of age, born in, on the beautiful island of Phuket. Up two places in the world ranking this week to 24, but she did spend two weeks at the end of April last year as world number 10. She is making her sixth 
appearance at the Japan Open, and it's the first time she's progressed through to a quarter-final. Her best previously was two second-round losses. A beat the left-hander from Hong Kong, Deng Zhuan, in the first round, and then beat the former champion, two-time finalist, actually, He Bing Jiao, the number six seed, in 37 minutes, 11 and 17. That was a huge result for Jindapong. So our umpire for this one is Chiapini, and our service judge, Guayana. Well, as far as Jindapon is concerned, trying to make it through to her second semi-final of the year, her only previous semi-final was the Australian Open. Uh, but in Sydney, she also had a very good route through to the latter stages because in the second round she beat Pusana Fen Carter Sindhu in straight games. Now here's the now famous ritual from Nozomi Okuhara. Real talking to. She gives herself and then a deep bow before entering the court. So as far as Jindapon is concerned. Well, she has been in semi-finals of major tournaments before. In fact, she was twice in the semi-final of the Indonesian Open, which, of course, last week was one of the Super 1000 events. So the player's just about ready. And we're just waiting for the umpire. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Nichon, Jindapol, Thailand. And on my left, Nozumi Okuara, Japan. Nozomi Okuara to serve. Level play. And there's a little bow to all four corners of the court to acknowledge and respect all of the court officials, including the line judges. So this quarterfinal gets underway. I think she's got an invisible friend that she's uh, sort of filling in on the tactical stuff for <laughs> Okuhara. Maybe even more than once one. in solder nodding and stuff yeah. like that. I had one as a child, I think, um, that was with me and I could tell and then there was something I wasn't happy about. Well left. Now this is a match theme that I don't think Okuhara should yeah. underestimate because yeah. Jindapon has been in terrific form of late. This is her third consecutive quarter-final or better in three tournaments played. Yeah. And the results against uh, Huping Zhao at least indicates that um, She's in really good shape. Yeah, and that's a super so shot. It's over. One, two. Good little deception. Oh, that's lovely. What a super shot. So Great over. disguise on that from Three, Okuhara. One. Flashlight there behind Okuhara. Pointed out by Jindapon. Yes, it will affect Jindapon more, won't it? Five. One. Now, oh, this is a good start from Okuhara. 
Yeah, because it hasn't really been a uh, that fantastic year for her yet, um, Okuhara. Uh, certainly in comparison to last year, six finals from 17 tournaments, three titles, Thailand, Korea and Hong Kong. But if we look at this year, the title she won last year as the umpire is just pointing out yeah. to one of the deputy referees that uh, about the flashlight those three titles she won last year were the second half of the year it was it was and uh, it's just combining the things that she went um, what they call professional so she's no longer part of a company team here in Japan to focus solely on the Olympics and um, she wasn't Five, chosen to play the Sudirman Cup final. That was Yamaguchi who was chosen. That's instead. right. Um, she uh, was beaten thoroughly in um, Australia Open by Chen Ufei and thoroughly last week by um, uh, PB Sindhu. So I think she's been, um, she's been struggling. Um, Two. Five. Since the end of the year 2018 but uh, mm. whether it's a build-up for the Olympics that might also be the case yeah and we we can't really know unless we're inside the uh, practice room with the players three a little bit of good fortune there five. for Jindapon the cross court smash that did the damage and she immediately was looking for the straight block seven three although i'm not sure it was meant to be a block was that supposed to be a lift or a block yeah. i'm not <laughs> sure <laughs> oh, that's a little harsh of me yeah. i do apologize good shot yeah, that's a couple of winners she's played with, that reverse slice cross-court drop from around the head position. They're only 11 points into the match. I think the playing conditions also suits her better here compared to, for instance, um, Indonesia. Service over. Why? Because Four, she relies on accuracy. Eight. Yes, so she's got a bigger court to play on here. And um, uh, I mean, she's physically strong, but that's mainly her her lower body. That's I mean, I'm not sure she's that muscle strong in her arms and shoulders and so on. And she's not she's not a player that relies on all out attack or anything. So slow shuttles in windy conditions yeah gives her very very little uh, to work with so to speak good rally missed it that was a great shot that uh, went a little wide there because it was Five, so quick eight. the reply look at the racket movement there beautiful eight. shot that's gonna be worth a couple of points later on in this match i suspect Jindapon. Oh my goodness me. 
half smash all about accuracy rather than power. Look at the placement. That's threaded down the line. And it makes sense to go for accuracy when you play a player that hasn't got that big a reach. So often if you use more power, then uh, become more inaccurate as well. And um, if you can get to it, it's sometimes reasonably easy to uh, get it back. Oh. Well, just proving that she has accuracy in abundance. Nine, six. The they're playing here at the moment, they're going to have to repaint the lines <laughs> after the first game here. <laughs> oh, that's a beauty. Defense. My goodness me. How on Eight. earth did she do that? Nine. I think, I think she had a read on um, on Okuhara a video that says she normally goes straight in those situations because she was more or less preparing her body and her racket to play that uh, cross shot. Cross defense reply there. Ten, eight. Oh, that went over. Yeah. That climbed Sorry, up the net and went over. Nine, ten. Incredible. Well, Thank you. I heard you saying in the last match, Steen, that it's not just skill, that we all need a little bit of luck at times. <laughs> yeah. and that was a lucky one from this young lady. Oh, that is a super shot. It's not just the final shot, it's the way Ten, she constructed the rally four. as well. Look, look at this final one. Look at that delightful cross-court net shot from Jindapon. And again, trying to make the court as big as possible for uh, Okuhara. So it is Nichiron Jindapon coming from 1-5 down to have the lead at the mid-game interval. Albeit just a solitary point advantage, it's still an advantage. I said she shouldn't be underestimated. <laughs> Oh, 
はどんなに良くないけどだからそういう時は自分がちょっと隅玉だったりドライブとかちょっと入れながら飲んで逆に向こうがさいきなりパンとか来るからちょっと向こうが余裕あるなと思ったらちょっと入れて1で出るのでこの人は1セクンド1セクンド1セクンド Sits behind the court with uh, Momota. Right. So, Sato did. Yeah. yeah. Along with Coach Nakanishi. Yeah, it indicates that he's coached for Momota's company team if he's still playing for a company team. Play. Well, there was a bit of a stunned silence from the fans here in Tokyo. When Jinpon went to the mid-game in pool with her one point of advantage, but that's a super smash, isn't it, from Okuhara. I thought she'd missed that. What did yeah. you think, Steve? Yeah, I thought so too. Yeah, no wonder Jindapon is challenging. Here we go. Yeah, yeah good challenge. Correction out. Challenging again. Yeah. No, I thought that Mr. time the line judge got that right. No, I think it's in. Out. Do you? I think there was chalk dust. <laughs> chalk <laughs> flew up. <laughs> okay, Mr. McEnroe. You are right, Mr. Peterson. Correction in. Not two great challenges. We will do. Yeah, and that's a good line course 13, because they both went in favor 11, of the uh, home player. Play. They were both very, very close, though, Steve. They were. In all, in all fairness. Yes, they were. Oh, that was a complete mishit. So deserve that. 12. 13. From Jindapon. I did wonder whether 14, the high serve would 13. have gone long because Jindapon's feet, when she played that return of serve, she was way outside the back of the court. Yeah, I think I think the players got to read that um, the drift is from Jindapon towards Okuhara, and uh, they're leaving very few. On the back line. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to see if I could roll it back. <laughs> That's gone wide. No, oh, it's been some sloppy play from Okuhara. In contrast, some very good play 
from Gundapon. Good rally, so long, that... hard fought rally. Yeah. It's concerning though Four that uh, it's 16. difficult for Okuhara, Six. even though she's a little bit ahead, it's difficult for her to uh, sort of uh, increase the advantage in the rally. So I feel that she perhaps doesn't have the right shot quality at the moment, as many other players uh, perhaps doesn't have uh, exactly at this moment here, because there's a world championship coming up and there's an Olympic qualification going on. Um, <clears throat> I just think I've seen it um, in, um, in um, Australia Open when she played uh, Chen Yufei. Um, there's extra chances that they're not uh, accurate enough her shot. She's got to be really accurate with her shot. certainly accurate that's sat on the top of the table before <laughs> falling over but you're right i mean that second game in sydney at the australian open okuhara against chen in face she lost to three last week she lost the second game having lost the first two to seven to seven so to it's Pusala. like it's like giving in that this okay it's not it's not working um and and that's what i'm interested to see how is that going now here? It's a different 15, arena, different opponent 16. and so on. And playing at home. Playing at home. Playing with pressure. Play. Three oh, good, oh. solid rallies from Okuhara. And good pace as well. So 16 all. That's good skill. I so thought that, that was a shot with very, very little movement of the racket head that Paul Sullivan Carter Sindhu had developed when I was watching her last week in Jakarta. That's a yeah. beauty, isn't it? Yeah. This time from Jindapon. It's a good way to continue your attack instead of just blocking it because it very often becomes too slow, the block. We actually saw it here to some extent 18, from, um, from Okuhara. 16. If you attack and just block, look how uh, long time the shuttle spend in the air before um, passing the net. And you simply give your opponent too much time. That's not the case if you can play a um, cross net drop with a faster trajectory. Mystic. I think I would use all my challenges. Yeah. Mm, I saw that. Nozomi Okuara challenges. Yeah, but go um, out. can't be totally certain, and it's a time of um, the game where you really need it. Yeah. Here we go. 
right? Yeah. Challenge unsuccessful. One challenge remaining. Both these two players, they've won all their matches when they won the 19, first game. 16. This year? Yeah. Wow. Play. So this opening game, crucial. And in the point, just two points needed for her. Again with the backhand. Mister. So game point opportunities. Frankie. Four of them. Game point. For Nietzsche on Jindapan. That's a great yeah. punch clear, my goodness me. She is playing so well, Jindapon. Jindapon 21, 16. Takes the opening game against the former world champion and former winner of the Japan Open, Nozomi Okuhara, and the home player is a game to have to do, which she hasn't done so far this year, and come from a game down if she wants to progress through to the semi-final. 23 minutes for that opening game. Seems like it's a disguised uh, phone that uh, she's holding there. <laughs> there is another lab to receive advice by phone. No. You can't have, for instance, coaches sitting uh, at home phoning in between the uh, games. That's not allowed. No, quite right, too. Court one, 20 seconds. Well, there could be a lot phoning. You're now number three in line. <laughs> oh, this is flashlight again. Well, she just had a practice serve, and I can tell you, it only reached the doubles service line. Second game, level, play. So, Nichol on Jindapon for Thailand, one game to the good against the former world champion. Yeah, that's landed in. that Okuhara has, because she's so physically quick and physically strong in her legs, do you think that she's become a little over-reliant on uh, running down a rally and running down opponents? Because it seems to me at the moment she's struggling to actually play winners. Yeah, she is struggling Sanzuna. to play winners and she's, in my One. opinion, struggling to play oh. with the uh, required quality because she needs better quality than players with a um, uh, larger reach than she has, or players that play more uh, attacking badminton. Um, I, don't, I don't know what it is. I just don't think she, at the moment, has the same playing strength as um, we saw her last year. 
I can't One. remember whether she'd been injured uh, in the, in the um, beginning of the season last year. Um, because as you pointed out, you're right, the results came later on mm. in the year. And that might be, um, that might be something deliberate in, in building up uh, the form. In the ball, challenges go out. Well, she's been right on her challenges so far, has Jindapon. Two challenges in the opening game. She was right on both of them, which meant she kept her two challenges. And it starts again from the second game. It's two challenges per game. Where you are proved wrong. So if you're right, just like tennis, you keep your challenges. Here we go. Challenge unsuccessful. One challenge remaining. Three, one. Play. Ooh, that went over. <laughs> that went over. <laughs> that That's was outrageous. Four. That was that little bit of luck One. we talked about. Turning a loser into a winner. Yes, you could clear. I want to quickly go back to your, your points you were making because you were talking about the fact that Okuhara isn't playing with the same quality no. of shots as last year, certainly the second half of last year. And this is why I questioned, has her mindset changed to thinking instead of I'm going to go for winners and I'm going to make tight shots and I'm going to force uh, problems for my opponent. You see, that smash, yeah. half smash, was was nowhere near the sideline, no, nor was that. that. that yeah, exactly. And that's why I'm, I'm questioning whether the mindset has changed. Yeah. I don't know, uh, but missed oh, she it. missed that one as well. The but thing, maybe. Maybe, but, but uh, what should change it? What should make her believe that that is a good way to go? I, I don't see anything two. that uh, could suggest that. I could see the the um, uh, actual playing strength go down a little bit if you try to implement something new. If you try to implement something new, try to uh, yeah. uh, play a little bit of different playing style as a uh, playing style B or C, then your playing strength goes down a little bit. I can't see Okuhara trying to do anything new. She just does what she always has done. Five, she just does two. it a little bit worse the way I see it. And especially compared to when she won the World Championship back in 2017, and when she won the um, uh, year-end finale, Six, she played magnificent. Two. Yeah. So I don't see her developing much on that playing style she had back then. So I think there must be something else behind it. And that's why I think it might be mental uh, in, in some ways. Um, uh, quitting your company, uh, going uh, full-time uh, professional, whatever it is. I, ha I have no idea what it is. I can just see that there's something wrong. It's not like the same player as we saw. No. No, I agree. Well, we can speculate, but we don't actually know. No. But maybe also to take into account is the fact that everybody else all the other players on the circuit are working to improve. I think Jindapon has developed that, those cross-court net yeah. shots, better yeah. quality than I've ever seen before. Yeah. It, it's tough to be uh, on top, and, and when you become the world champion and you win the uh, year-end finale, people are looking at you and say, wow, we don't really like playing her because she's too good. What can we do? Yeah. But also that perhaps Seven, there's some three. Uh, defeats that hurt a bit more than others, like the 21-3 uh, against um, um, Chen Fei, but that only came recently in mm. Australia. Well so. left. Yeah. Service over. Four. Seven. Yeah. 
It was a short lift and it got what it deserved. Five. Seven. Simply not close enough to the sideline, those clears. Nor that smash. No. Nope. It's in the middle of the uh, half court. So she's not putting her opponent under not enough at pressure. All. Not at all. Not making her move enough. No. Nope. That lift to the middle. Six. Seven. Ten. actually seen her change playing style um, at least once and who are you talking about Okuhara Okuhara yeah I've seen her change playing style and it's interesting because uh, of the next, next match coming on a replay Eight. of the final from last week in Six. Indonesia because it was in the world championship final against PB Sindhu she changed her playing style the way Yamaguchi changed hers last week in Indonesia she started attacking PB Sindhu. She had a very bad record up until the World Championship final against um, PB Sindhu, but um, I can't remember whether it was uh, in the middle of the first game. I think it was uh, after the interval in the first game. She changed and started attacking the way Yamaguchi attacked last week, and it worked. Nine, so that would be six. a way to try and develop the playing style the way I see it if you wanted to develop it. Now, here she's gone to play more safe, which has uh, worked against her in my opinion. Yeah. We don't put it up. Nine, six. Inside the line. Yeah. So we serve that. Seven. Ten. Each on. Much, much, much better than her ranking what? suggests. Wonderful. Much better than her 24 ranking at the moment. Yeah, she had a long run of uh, first round losses. Was it previous to Australia Open? Yeah, but she had uh, six first round losses and three and second round losses. And we can see um, there's some strapping under her right knee there that uh, could suggest that there's been injury uh, problems. So the last shot was a good rally for Eight, Okuhara. Ten. Oh, 
Looks to me as if she's having a, a crisis in confidence. I think Okuhara. so. I think so. That was two points out of the pocket where it should have been one point for her. Instead, it's two points for the opponent in double quick time. Yeah. And she looks like she lacks um, self confidence. It's in the middle of the half court. That is not sharp enough. That one was a little better, but that's going wide. Yeah. But took it. That's going wide as well. Righty. Oh! Take that! <laughs> so you saw that. 11, a little nine. moment of Matt gets suddenly. On. The cross court drive from deep in her forehand corner. That was a desperation shot in a way, but it turned out into a magnificent winner. Look at that. Terrific. to the opening game with the advantage here in the second to come back in this quarter final and make it all the way through to what would be a third final. But then Yamaguchi is on a quest to make it through to a third final at the Japan Open. But the most finals in women's singles for any nine. player over the years stay here. In Japan Open. In Japan Open. Ooh. I'll give you a moment to think about that. That's my quiz question for the day. Susie so Susanto. Oh, no, she Ten. was second on the list. Yeah. Okay, then I'm satisfied. She was <laughs> five finals, winning three titles, but yeah. the most finals was Ye Xiao Ying. Ye Xiao Ying. Seven finals, winning three titles. Oh, good. Wow, that looked long to me. Eleven. Well, she was four. right there, and she's not she's challenging. challenging. No. So back now. You never know. I feel like putting 11. a speech bubble on um, on Okuhara's body's language. I, I just think I know how she feels. What, what do you mean by that? Frustrated? Yeah, the, okay. That didn't come over. Okay, that was... Finally, I was lucky. Shot. No wonder she celebrates Jindapon. 12. Ball. Oh, I wonder if that's the longest running of this second game. I think it probably is. That's a better smash. Much better placement. Was that a, a tired looking shot from Jinder from that final over. smash? Perhaps. 13, 12. Thailand.
Yeah, that was definitely a tired looking shot to me. Bad error from Jindapon. This is um, the second uh, quarter they're seeing right now, right? So they're going upwards in the draw towards yes. Michelle Lee, who's That's beaten right. uh, Tai Su Ying. Yeah. And Jindapan has recently beaten Michelle Lee in uh, either Indonesia or uh, Australia Open. So, of course, she must think that this is a great opportunity for her. She was in desperate 13, trouble, was Jindapon, 15. but the luck of the net court from deep in her forehand corner. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. What do you do? She was ready and waiting. There's nothing you can do. Uh, Jindapon beat Michelle Lee in Indonesia in um, the second round. The splits there. So reserve up. 16, 13. Ladies, on court. That was a great example 16. on how inaccuracy created trouble. That's simply too close to Jindapan, and that gives her the opportunity of launching a smash like this. Yeah, because then she's in good balance. Then she's she in good balance. Had she it hasn't been, had to move. No, had it been half a meter further to the left, she would not have been able to do that um, cross smash. That was well placed. Yeah, that one was much, much so better. 17. It's, it should be quite logical that your opponent's shot quality is uh, dependable on the amount of pressure you put on them. That, of course, also, of course also goes for Okuhara. The more she's put under pressure, the uh, less the shot quality. That's what played. Oi! Good chance she's Sorry, taking there, Chindapun. 15, 17. That was very well played, yeah. wasn't it? <laughs> it was, I think it was a hope, I think it was the only corner she could yes. cover. <laughs> Can you please play it back at me here? But that does actually raise an issue, because a number of times in last week and this week, when I've been watching Okuhara, I, I think she's been trying to play net shots too often when she could play a pressure, pressure. shot. Wow, great shot defense again. Uh, well, the defense on the backhand side from Jindapon. That one. Absolutely incredible. That won't do an injured Thank knee you. much good, will it? No. Right. 
You've got to give credit, though, to Okuhara because she obviously hasn't been playing as well as she did. No, but she's working. She's working at it. She's sticking with it. Yes. She's refusing to give up. And that's a great and quality in any athlete. That is so admirable because, I mean, <laughs> things are not going to change by some divine thing falling down no, from God, heaven, changing everything. It's only going to change by sort of uh, pursuing the possibilities. Yeah, well said. If you fall off a horse, you get up again. If you fall off a second time, you get up. And a third time as well. So two points away from forcing a third and deciding game from the number three seed, Okuhara. This is where the nerves will kick in, I suspect, with Okuhara. Yeah. She doesn't want to see Jindapan closer than those three points. Her four game point game opportunities. Point. 16. One game all. Known to be Okuhara battling back second game won by to take the second game. Okuhara, 21 16. One game all. So symmetry in the score lines. First two games, one and lost to 16. Flexibility and dexterity to take one shirt off very discreetly. I thought a whole body language there was yeah. tired to me. So everything to play for in this third and deciding game. Fifty-two minutes played, and uh, Jindapan has only Final won game. one match this year that's gone past fifty minutes. That was the first round of the Australian Open against her compatriot Bravo. Cho Chu Wong. Lasted an hour and 13, all other matches. 
longer than 50 minutes has been lost. Yeah, that's very interesting. saying earlier that neither of these players won. had won a match this Love. year when they dropped the opening game. Had they gone to, had Okohara gone to three games when she dropped the opening game but lost the match, or was that? No, I said they had both won all their matches when they won, won. the first game. Oh, okay, okay, sorry, I beg your pardon. First two rallies Love. of this deciding game. I think our theory about Jindapon being tired, all the indications are that we may well be right on that. Jindapon has lost all her uh, matches when she's lost the first game, which isn't the case in this match. Perfect. And three shots, three consecutive shots into the deep backhand Five, corner two. of Jindapon. is over. players on the world Six. tour I would have said that Okuhara 
Jaden. Was one of the most patient, but she seems to be <laughs> running out of patience at times here. Yeah. It, it's like uh, it's like her game plan has gotten mixed up. Smash right into Five, the deep backhand corner. Six. looking for so many angles. Yeah. Oh, that's a difficult shot. Wasn't successful Eight. either. Five. I recall actually once we made a video analysis on uh, Camilla Martin's uh, Chinese opponents in women's singles. And suddenly we found out that one of the things they did was that they played a cross shot to uh, Camilla and then they moved to the other side because all Camilla's replies were straight. Straight drop or straight clear. Straight back from yeah. where the shuttle was. That's Sanzuba. what you learn when you're Six. Uh, a young player. Eight. Don't play crosses, they're dangerous. Mm. But uh, if you don't play them as a senior professional, then it's really dangerous not yeah. to play them. Jindapon. Seven, eight. Okuhara has actually come back from a first game loss to win the match two times out of ten matches so far in this uh, year 2019. Out of ten three game matches. Out of ten matches where she's lost the first game, she's come right. back to win okay. two of them. 20% comeback rate. And, and again, if you go back to 17 and 18, how many times did you see that, that she was so far away from the shuttle? I don't think it was a whole lot of times. No. Fantastic oh. rally. 
really good one to win for Okuhara because it was uh, Jindapan who uh, controlled yeah. most of it. Good retrieval there. Ready to play. It's on. It's okay. Play. as soon as she's more accurate with her attacking shots, with all her shots, she's finding it easier to win the rallies. And that great smash straight down the line means that the number three seed, Okuhara, has a three-point advantage at the change events in this deciding game. Match over the hour mark. So what has Jindapon got left? Does she have the physical stamina to stick with this? Yeah, that's the question. And if I were Okuhara, I would work really, really hard. Extremely hard. She always does, but I would be even more focused on the first two, three rallies here, because if you can win those, then I think the spirit with the gender pun sort of um, disappears. Maybe, yeah, I was going to say maybe not completely blow broken, but certainly cracked. Yeah. It's a good rally for Okuhara on this one. Yeah, she won't get that. No. But it's out. <laughs> it's out. Challenges go out. Well, I was convinced it was out. What did you think, Steve? Uh, it's, it, I, I, I don't dare to call this uh, one. <laughs> That's why we've got Hawkeye. Yeah. Here we go. And the speech bubble to the coaches is, I just knew I was going to do that. <laughs> One challenge remaining. I think it's important that our umpire is quite strict now because Jindapun has had enough time to get a little drink and towel down. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's a really, really tough rally where she went into survival mode and uh, got rewarded. That's a lovely shot. I understand your comments completely, and I totally agree with you, Steen, about the first couple of rallies. Well, we've had the first couple of rallies, but yeah. a, another one of, of a long, hard-fought rally will yeah. suit uh, this lady particularly well within this match, I think. Yes. But won't that just enhance the thought process that I can just wear down a pair of uh, opponents and given what you were saying earlier, she needs to work on the quality of her shots more. She wants to win yeah. and better her bronze medal from the last Olympics yes. and get into the Olympic final. She can't be using this mode. And the more that she wins matches just by the physicality, the more she will believe, surely, that's the way to play. Um, I, don't think, I don't think she will, um, but um, in principle, I agree with you. Yeah. Which means I totally disagree. Come on, then you're the expert. No, but but uh, yes, 
So what you're suggesting is that she should be true to her plan and go for um, um, the winning shots and But uh, we don't know whether that is her plan. We don't know whether it's her plan. Anyway, when you're so close here, you just do what you believe gives you the best chance of winning, even if it's going back to uh, old times or back to normal, because if you win here, you get a chance to try again tomorrow. Yes. No, I appreciate that. 14, 10. Quickly, just a little quickly. and yep. to get it as accurate as that. She couldn't have walked over there and placed it no. any better. And it keeps the court open the next time she's under pressure, so yep. even if you can only play it short straight, she might be able to get away with it. Yeah, that's a super shot from Jindapon. Serve is over. 11, 15. Now, that's the one where I felt she should have put pressure. Yeah. She just plays the next shot again. Serve is over. Yeah. 12. 16. That one. Perhaps she feels that she controls the rally better by playing below the tape instead of uh, playing the backcourt. Uh, where if the opponent gets to it, then her court is much more exposed herself. Of course, we think that you can put a lot of pressure on those shots to the backcourt. Just the first of the two trend lines on the backcourt would be more than enough. Yeah. Stand still. <laughs> We've got the opportunity 17. from that mistimed shot. But had her smash come back, Jim Pong was outside the court. Yeah. Play.
Oh. Reactions. 14. Speech bubble. 17. I just knew she was getting that. In all fairness, she puts a lot of pressure on um, that rally. Uh, Jinder Punch played close to the lines. There was a number of um, shots where I thought, wow, that could go wide. to be a momentum turner for uh, Okuhara if she gets through this one. Wow. Another neck court, this time from the backhand from Jindapon. Just deflected enough to make Kokuhara mister mistime the return. Save her the match, yeah. potentially. This time, 
she had the courage to kill it and immediately apologizes. 18, 19. Just wide. She's challenging. Yeah. And she knows she's it's not going to win it, but she's going to take the break. Go out. Yeah, really out. Challenge unsuccessful. So One it's match point remaining. opportunities. Two of them for Nozomi Okuhara. Sarizoda, 20, match point, 18. It's really been a hard day at the office Yeah. for uh, both these two players. A second shy of an hour and 20 minutes this has been in progress. Oh, that's well saved. Sarizoda. My goodness, that took courage. 19, 20. Umpire confirming the scoreline. Coming from a game deficit, this the moment of victory and the delight for the former world champion, Okuhara. Well, Jindapon played her part in pre creating a wonderful match to watch, but it is Okuhara who wins this quarterfinal, 16-21. 21-16, 21-19 in an hour and 20 minutes of thrilling badminton. So it's Okuhara who will play against Michelle Lee in the semi-final tomorrow.